Good evening. Hello. Thank you for coming. Hello and uh, welcome to the first event of the fall 19, or excuse me, the fall 2014 Holloway Poetry Series. <laughs> um, I'm Cecil Giscombe. Uh, this is going to be a very full semester on campus with a lot of literary goings on. In the Holloway series itself, uh, the next event will be, unfortunately, a sad one, a memorial reading for Hilary Gravendike, who died earlier this year, a uh, poet, scholar, PhD student in this department, assistant professor at Pomona. The memorial reading will take place in this room this coming Tuesday, the 9th of, sep of September. On the, on the 18th, and you'll get, you'll get mail about all this as well. On the 18th of September, two weeks from tonight, Ed Roberson, the Holloway poet, will read from his work. That will be followed by a, a catered reception, so be there. Um, on the 23rd of October, the poet C.D. Wright will visit us. She is the mixed blood Holloway visitor this semester. She, she's going to read from her work, her poetry, in the evening, and in the afternoon she will give a talk about the uh, intersections of the languages of poetic innovation and the languages of race. Watch the wall posters for, for that. Uh, the next issue, by the way, of mixed blood itself will be out soon. We'll, we're waiting on a couple of last pieces. It will include poetry and talk by uh, Claudia Rankine, David Marriott, Tyrone Williams, and Tisa Bryant. It will also include a version of Renee Gladman's Scalapino lecture uh, from last, last semester and paintings by Fran Herndon. Many thanks to Samia Rahimtula and to Kevin Killian for their help with, uh, with that. On the 4th of November, uh, the next Holloway reading will be Clark Coolidge. So that's a Tuesday. The 4th of November, Tuesday, Clark Coolidge will be here reading from his, from his work. And on the 20th of November, Tennessee Reed will be here reading from her poetry. That's a Thursday. The series was made possible, as most of you know, by the Roberta C. Holloway Fund and by the uh, uh, Department of English. And um, it's helped immensely and uh, valuably by the work of my co-curators, Jane Gregory and Christopher Patrick Miller. So my, my thanks, to, thanks to them. I would be remiss if I did not mention the offerings of our companion series, Lunch Poems, which also will occur this semester. The first event was today, readings by faculty and staff from a variety of disciplines, and I had to miss it because I had to go and see Nancy Morhian, the Cuban poet at SS at the San Francisco State. The Lunch Poem series takes place on the first Thursday of every month from 1210 to 1250 in Morrison Library, which is itself uh, inside Doe Library. Um, the next one is the 2nd of October, a celebration of Frank O'Hara's 50th anniversary of Frank O'Hara's Lunch Poems, publication of that book itself. After that, uh, a reading on the 6th of November by Robin Robertson, um, and a uh, reading on the, uh, uh, the 4th of December by Gillian Connolly. Tonight, the faculty reading, the faculty will read in alphabetical order, except that the Holloway poet, Ed Roberson, will read last as our cleanup hitter. I will make one introduction at this time uh, for all of us in, uh, in, that, in that order. Um, Alphabetically, I'm Cecil Giskin. I teach courses here in poetry and nonfiction, and I've agreed to be the moderator of a series called People of Color in Academic and Intellectual Life, which will begin in, uh, in October. Watch for notices. My book, Ohio Railroads, a poetry chapbook in the form of an essay, will be published uh, in the next couple of weeks. My book of essays about poetry, Border Towns, will appear in May 2015. The next reader, Robert Hass, has just won the Wallace Stevens Award, a wonderf wonderful and richly deserved honor, a prize given by the Academy of American, American Poets. So congratulations, Bob, for that. It's wonderful. Thank you. And his most recent book is Essays, What Light Can Do. A book of his poems in Chinese translation uh, appeared, appeared this summer. Lynn Higinian's recent literary books are um, The Book of a Thousand Eyes and The Wide Road, the second one written in collaboration with Carla Harriman. Uh, in fall of last year, Wesleyan republished her early book, My Life, in an edition that also includes the related My Life in the 90s. In spring of... Uh, <coughs> 
as spring of this year, Westing also published a guide to the poet to Poetics Journal, a writing in the expanded field, 1982 to 1998, co-edited by Lynn and uh, Barrett Watton. Her next book, The Unfollowing, will be published by Omnidon. And uh, Lynn Higinian is the, uh, uh, the curator and the moderator of Women in Intellectual Life, the first uh, 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 instance of that of that of that forum will take place on the 17th of September. Again, you'll get you'll get notes about this in your in your uh, in your mailboxes. Jeffrey O'Brien is the author most recently of People on Sunday, uh, 2013, and Metropole, 2011. His recent chapbooks include Hesiod uh, and Poem with No Good Lines. He's the co-author with John Ashbery and Timothy Donnelly of Three Poets. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey O'Brien is an associate professor in the English department here and also teaches for the Prison University Project at San Quentin State Prison. John Shoptaw has published poetry in The New Yorker and in Common Knowledge, his book of poems, Times Beach, was selected for the 2014 Notre Dame Review Book Prize. Congratulations, John. And, uh, and that'll be published by Notre Dame in, uh, in the spring of 2015. And Ed Roberson comes to us from Chicago, where he is the Distinguished Artist in Residence at Northwestern University. His books of poetry include When Thy King Was a Boy, The New Wing of the Labyrinth, Atmosphere Conditions, Voices Cast Out to Talk Us In, and most recently, To See the Earth Before the End of the World, these among other books. He has won the Shelley Memorial Award and the Stephen Henderson Award, among uh, other, other honors. Okay, I'm up here, and I'm first in the alphabet. So, so let me let me start. I'm going to read from two, uh, you know, two set. Uh, two sequences. I'll read a, a, a section, a snippet from a, a, a sequence called uh, Negro Mountain, one of the two one of the two that I'll read from this evening. And both of them are from a, uh, a book in progress called Plantation Songs. So this is from Negro Mountain. Look again. Lose yourself by the end of the movie. How in Alien, Sigourney Weaver piled into the pod, the shuttle, the rocket dinghy, and quit her spaceship of doom via that long, long chute underneath. And the watcher sees the ship itself, finally, from her point of view, visible through the clear hull of the pod, like God's gift of exiting the valley. And the ship's finally an array of lights on a neutral surface rushing right on by above her. 1979, her face aquiline, even then, but the cheekbones less prominent. There's a twist, or often there is. Anybody who can walk behind inevitability can tell a story. It's just the test of time, young man. What can a young gal do but dawdle? Be some of and apart from all that you meet and see? It went out once and came back out of orbit to HBO. And love is certainly bone, best beloved, and money. So, feet before the fire, you better watch again because form's importance is not to be detached or understated. Get behind the money. You can download Alien Alarm Reverb. Blasted on the alarm that blares through the Nostromo spaceship after Ripley, Ms. Weaver's character, starts the self-destruct sequence, assuring that there'll be nothing more to write about. And I'm going to read you some sections I like from a series called Camp Town, a series about monstrosity, about minstrelsy, and love. This is from that same book in progress, Plantation Songs. Seven. I won't read numbers. Okay. <laughs> Tunes came to chronicle volition. Say what it is you wanted. Shelter in the lee of what you said. <clears throat> Shelter in the published range. The lips of one pushed up against the brow of the other one. Sing what music you want. Meteor, shooting star. And then say what overtook you. Let me talk a little bit. I think safety's all hex. If this or here, you can walk around. You could pace time. 
Let me please you. Don't be cross with me. It could be the widest part of the field. We tarried all day on this job. Night season, the sky was black as skin. We were sexed and sighted, and we were making a desultory retreat. Nobody likes that. Just ahead of the rage. Who in hell walks? I'm beside myself. There's some evil to this boat, and you can study it, but it's beyond capture. Jaunty brother. The more vulgar, the more tuneful. And how intimate the chorus with its interjections. Camps up all night, and I've got no business at the skyline. I'm not about to integrate. I'm beside myself, and as distant from fable as I am from silence. That is, I think I'm too ticklish by half and that the parts are catastrophic. Where in the world had I been going? Cheek to cheek, sailing ahead to the bad man's ball, half awake. Town's awake all day, and I was out of town. Or bad air, or nothing in the free air between us, nothing between us, no fabric or purpose. Or I was outside of myself, the monster may have said. Or I was unreliable. The stride we took was careless and full of mistakes. One's part mistaken for the others, typically, though the range of interest was also a kind of passing. Camp Town serves a comic purpose. They let you out? How will you appear again? In smatterings, or in any counting game, someone invisible, me, someone else, or in just opening the window or pantomiming such an act. Aren't you getting ahead of yourself? The monster may have asked. Little story to the stride, to pacing, but the bigger figures just part of the terrain. Seeing is embarrassment. On stalking legs, I would go and, sullen as the night is exaggerated, slap silly those abroad. Unsure, but so what? Implicit in all pacings, distinguished success. True enough to end on, but was the question forced? Before this tale goes further, or breaks into falsehood, just who saw what? Or who woke up and was seen to be measureless, yet exaggerated? Exaggerated in proportion by certain bedfellows. The lover's reply to the reader is pointed. Shout against a door like it was water. But no, in fact, it's just instruction or admonitory delight. And no matter what, a familiar request, at least formally. Relief's really only relief from what barking there is inside. So please yourself and don't get cross with me. One monster? Our faithlessness, our specific ability to navigate beyond the morass, is divided in fact, and the empire, as such, is built on passing through that, comfortable, if as anticipated, as its own boat. Unchanging monster, I am really any animal. That is, I identify with them who have hunting enemies, and with the enemies that flay them as well. And were you really to ask, I'd reply that there's nothing ahead but more of the similar. There's no snag song, the devil's in the water, and so hot the common element, no matter what names you address me as. Someone said, our faithless hearts divided but continuous. Knock on the door of one house, and then try the house next door. Everywhere I go, someone else said. I find a crocodile has been there before me. That's it. Thank you. Bob Hess. Thank you, Cecil. I'll say another word about the uh, reading next week uh, by uh, the memorial reading for Hillary Gravedick. Many of you here knew or those of you who didn't, Hillary arrived here uh, at the age of 21 to begin graduate study, having at 18 got a diagnosis of a fatal disease. 
she knew when she started graduate school that she really Tuesday morning, early, on the lawn by the pond, there's a scattering still of red and white rose petals from a Sunday wedding. A slow ripple of wind on the green pond, quick rippling in the aspen's leaves. Is there anything that does not stand for them inside? Insects skimming the surface tension of the water, the small circles their legs make on the glass. Dusky insect eating bird perched on a chunk of gray granite outcrop, the kind they call glacial morale, that the reflection on the pond reads back to the sun as a shade of warm, pale brown, almost purple. The young man in my lecture course always took the same seat halfway up until one morning when he didn't. It was almost the end of the term. His parents wrote and asked to see his final essay, and I looked in my tall stack of unread student papers and found it was on the voices speaking from the dead in the poems of the papers. Is there anything they are thinking on? The thick swarming of insects at the pond's edge has made the perching bird so hurt. Someone who lived in their lived into their thirties and studied entomology has observed that they swarm that way, the males, because it's efficient, easier to be noticed en masse if you were female looking for a mate. And in this one way, the swarming of insects is like high school. The girl who dies of being fat, of not having breasts, of too thick calves, or hat. The boy who dies of stuttering, of the distance between his imagination of himself and how he imagines he is seen. Children with their backpacks in the morning and the solemn look as if their parents had sent them out to paddle down the roof. The boy who dies because his roommate films him having sex with another boy and puts him on the internet so that everyone who knows can gather in his mind and giggle as they watch him come and cry out, Oh, call, call. But what for not to pray for their presence in the moments? Assault. Used candy wrappers blowing on the street. White candles in some pumpkin color fall out, out, and pure candles in some color of those very fingers. Once the crown of his eyes, once they had been set on a table, and covered up, he finds an old cabin. 
Lynn.
Try this one more time. <laughs> okay? All right. I, um, when I was much younger, I worked um, for a summer in Alaska. And um, a couple of times in those, those uh, months, I would ride past the um, glacier um, at the end of Cook Inlet. Um, a while ago, I picked up a newspaper, and it said that the glacier had moved so far, far back from the road that you couldn't see it. You had to drive back to the glacier. And I remembered just pulling the VW up beside the glacier and just walking up on it. So it's gone. Um, people are grabbing at the chance to see the earth before the end of the world. The world's death piece by piece, each longer than we. Some endings of the world overlap our lived time, skidding for generations to the crash scene of species extinction, the five minutes it takes for the plane to fall, the mile ago it takes to stop the train, the small bay to coast the liner into the ground, the line of title to a nation until the land dies, the continent uninhabitable. The very subtlety of time between large and small. Here's a media note. People chasing glaciers in retreat up their valleys and the speed. While well, watched ice was speed made invisible. Now it stays and a few feet further away a subtle collapse of time between large and our small human extinction. If I have a table at this event, mine bears an ice sculpture. Of whatever loss it is, it lasts as long as ice does until it disappears into its polar white and melts and the ground beneath it into vapor, into air. All that once chased us and we chased to a balance chasing back Tooth for spear, knife for claw, locks us in this grip. We just now see our own lives taken by, taking them out. Hunting the bear, we hunt the glacier, with the changes come of that chase. Topoi, Topoi. The plane begins its descent into Newark from the west at the Delaware Water Gap. The whole width of the state of New Jersey is a base of a triangle underlying that approach to its point. Geography, test, problem off the wall to the ground, whole highway systems unfold again below the maps we rode. But at what point did we become so familiar with such long perspective that we could look down and recognize the pile of Denver by the drop off and crumble of the plate up into the Rockies? Or say, that's Detroit by the link of lakes, by Lake St. Clair, some 30,000 feet above Lake Erie, while just barely spotting Huron on the horizon. Some earlier hunter had a similar picture in his head for getting around. And what he saw seems map, his feet figured. What a Boeing 757 picks up and puts down, pacing off my passing through the world by air. But we've seen the ground ball up into one step and stand on nothing else, our footing in the vacuum diminished sky of solar space. Yet we haven't seen again his vision haven't yet dreamt from it even such map as he had, as he had hunted by. We haven't seen answered from the garden's gazing ball whether there is direction after all the dream lines have been hunted to circumference. Like trained bear dancing on a circus ball, we look down, our feet in a step from which there is no step off. 
this footprint all of step ever taken. The hunted step, kept far and fast enough away from the hunter to keep the distance of its life, shortens to none between them, or is that shit outcome stepped in become their one in perspective, step from which there is no step out of, in the sense of the surface over which a phenomenon exists, the earth is the footprint of life. Gaia's gravity swayed steps take on orbit. We, in the tropic of balance, in a basket on her head, a blue wrap of sky, sun ripens the third rind of plain to take us home. Sweet fruit of the journey of all journey, fruit of all step. Home is the sweet fruit that is all of step that is ever taken. Earth is all of step ever taken by most of us. We think, but the aisles of air we walk about with, the seatbelt sign off, hang off our back. Angels' wings or motion lines, such as drawn in cartoons or the tesseract of four dimensions. Cube sunk in a square of space, sunk in a space of time. Our cubed world, worn as a helmet among strung dimensions, far distant enough to see the ball that all our ways are woven from. Sand, the lens grinder's patient hand, sore elbow, head in the stars. He looks down at his feet. Sunk in time, the footprint of life is death. The grave there is no step out of. The compost earth, the earth is the footprint of life. lunar eclipse. You've seen only a plain circle of moon, the white wafer. The low sky's flat penny grow into that dime flipped in the turn taken by the earth. Until, until you see what's worn or what's won from behind its veil of brightness by the lunar eclipse. A red marble, a pinball of blood, and it's your shot a ball of red clay before it's punched into a bowl. What I want to say, and it's looked that far away from it. I want to say it suddenly turns three-dimensional with shadow, shaded in the drawn earth curtains darkening. And that darkness makes shape-informed light clearer rounding out midnight and moon. Once it is that lighted ball, falls above a night now floored with depth. So dark above you, you can feel the feet and meter fill with time. With New Year's confetti, each speck's fall a ga galaxy ago back into space. Space back into space restored beneath the moon to here in the shading of eclipse. The distances, we have to feel the, the spatial in what we see to see clearly. The eye measure in hands and feet as when we kiss. Distance disappears, our eyes close, and we see bodily in raised detail, a measure deepen into our world, in each other. And what we are in shadow, the world makes of our love. By this earth shine, we see ourselves whole, see in whole perspective. This is a Trinidadian friend of mine, has three degrees and just a very quiet uh, person, Tony Halfhide. When he opened the door on the passenger side and it spoke that needle crank of a greeting, he said, this ain't good, you know. You ain't got no ladies keeping it oiled for ye? Speaking to things in that Trinidadian straight to it talk when he speaks. I never have a defense in his no dressing it up court. You don't need much, his mantra. He don't eat the meat, no dressing on the vegetables. I've always admired how right he is. All to while he never say, never say so, lest he ask. Truth don't take much word. Most of your time it takes seeing. 
I will work only so I have time not to work. You don't need much. The only thing I ever heard him say, him need, women, cars, all of that, no, was to look at the ocean. I have to be where I can see the ocean. of the earth. Angel of pelicans, the huge sack that brings the drowned back unswallowed, cough to their feet, stretches thin as water. And as a newborn's natal skin that sloughs off, it is water, drying. The asleep pull their wake shop shirts off over their heads and drop the inside out body of their clothes here on the floor's beach. I believe you when you say, Luis, water is the skin of the earth. The pull thinness of that water is the air. Carries in it, sack inside out our lungs. Angel of the frigate bird, of the puff fish, the huge earthen word that emptying out is world for us. I believe you when you say water is the skin of the earth. Carried in the skin of the earth, the black blood of the crossing carries me. Sit in what city we're in. Someone may want to know one day how many steps we took to cross one of our streets. To know there were hundreds in one city, streets in one direction, and as many as could fit between the land's cart contours crossing those. Our hive grid as plumb as circles flanked into the insect hexagons. Our stone are steel. Others may want more to know what steps aside the southern streets required to flow at last free to clear, to know how those kept out, set foot inside, set down, and how the mirrors around the lunch counter, counter reflected the face to face, the cross mirrored depth reached infinitely back into either. The one pouring the bowl over the head of the other sitting in at that counter. This regression, this scene, stepped back into nothing both ways, from which all these versions of the once felt sovereign self locked together in the mirror's march from deep caves of long alike, march back into the necessity, to the necessary, living together we are, reflected in the face to face we are. A nation facing ourselves, our back turned on ourselves, how that reflection set in demonstration of each face, mirror reflecting into mirror generates, a street cobbled of the heads of our one long likeness, the infinite progressions, the oceans themselves one, catch their image, hose by riot cots, cops down the gutter into the sphere surface, the river looked into reflects. One face, one face, one face. A here, not here division of things, where the future is on the same place as the past is, maybe one of African masquerades of time, like those facing mirrors in which time is making faces at you from the elemental moment, the faced and yet to be faced in one frame, where from, where to, are faces of here, where a few in the crowd at that lunch counter face their actions, where what dark is revealed in the face-to-face -face is a back-to-back, -back. the words of that God against us. In the glass, the face observed changes the looking at that face, cancels both their gaze to transparency, opens around it a window containing right here around us, and in that window, these same in the lapped frame of this one moment are the other one's world we see into 
into ours. You can't smash the mirror there, but that it break here. And in it, you see that you can't see your own back, your angel of the unfamiliar, of that not like your face. See? And relax that hand then, that hand raised against your impossible hand that reaches to give the pat, to okay, touch you at the unfamiliar, those stubs on your back. From mirror to window, glass to thin air between, and finally us with no you nor I, but being with all our world inside the other. But they are only in our each part, yet having no displacement of the other. Just as each wishes, the self not lost, shared, being in common, in each other, being as different as night and day still of one spin, the sphere surface of this river. To know ourselves as a god would know us, would make us gods of ourselves. We are so fused in communication, we happen at once, as if as one gazing ball pivot of critical gardens cooked creations, here in the glass of the city. A godlike simply knowing doesn't determine what built raft of citizen drafts where the street runs up the walk to the door, ocean teased apart to each of its drops of rain. Someone is riding a bus, too tired for everything except what is right. A god has his back against the wall of a church in Birmingham. The marchers take to the streets. Someone may want to know what city we're in that curves glowing over the edge into an earth. Thank you. Okay. My thanks to the readers and my thanks to you for being here. I'm, I'm so pleased at the turnout, at the numbers uh, in, this, in this room, at the interest. Please keep coming back to the Holloway, Holloway series. Our friends from the University Press Books are here with books for sale by the, by the poets. Um, so buy a book, talk to the poets, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much.